Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the traditional service at Christ Fellowship in Palmetto Bay, Florida with Pastor Carrie Miller. It's great to have you guys here. We have a wonderful, some wonderful songs, and we're going to hear our message. I believe it's from Ephesians, so get out your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter 1 when we're done with the singing. And the first uh, <clears throat> hymn we're going to sing, uh, the, uh, the verse for the hymn is let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. Psalm 107, 131. Pray and praise without ceasing. This is count your blessings. 644. <clears throat> Oh 
Okay, so anybody have any requests? I'm gonna, Jesse, we're gonna pray for your son, David. Amen. Okay. He's getting out December 3rd. Okay. Amen, that's great. David, that's great. Okay. Pray for my mom. Uh, what's her name? Julieta. Julieta, right. I'm gonna pray for uh, Shawanda Harris, who had a stroke. Shawanda Harris. In the and for uh, Miguel Cabeda, who also had a stroke a couple of months ago. He saw him. What's his, I'll just say Miguel. Miguel. Okay. I wanna pray for Larry Felder. He wasn't feeling well. He had some buildup on his ankles of fluid. Okay, yes, Manny. I'm sorry, Jesse, go ahead. Oh, we're praying for John. He's a job. Yes, absolutely. John Zinicola. John, who needs a job. Yes, Manny. Yeah, I got two prayer requests for today. Yeah. Yeah. I want to pray for well, wait, uh, Camille, hold on for one yeah. second because Manny was actually um, giving me a prayer request. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, my brother in law yesterday uh, was cutting his hair up in Broward and he fainted, he passed out, and they rushed him to the hospital. What's his name? His name is Bruce. Uh, he used to be one of the worship singers here at the church. Yeah, so have they figured out what the problem is? They're doing tests. Um, he was there overnight and he's still there. He's up in some hospital in Northern well, Broward. Let's, let's be, so let's be grateful for the fact that they took him to the hospital and they're yeah. looking over him. Yeah. He had suffered a stroke before and he had prostate uh, cancer and uh, so he's just going through some health problems. Yeah. And then yeah. the second prayer request is my friend Walter in New York or New Jersey who's praying for a lung transplant. Uh, he's got 15% of his lungs working. He's praying that the Lord will open an opportunity for a lung transplant. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Camille. Um, yes, I want to I pray for the world. Um, I, know, I know it's kind of like, um, having a difficult time. Like, hey, I was watching the news the other day, and it was kind of odd because we're, we're just about to enter winter, right? Or in the last months of the year, usually when cold weather comes, and uh, the, the obstacle is if this is a hurricane approaching, approaching, but it veers up and goes into the um, Eastern Europe state, Euro European state. And I'm like, well, I'm praying for the world. Um, Africa, um, Brazil, South America, North America, Canada, and all the other Okay, we'll do that. Pray for the world. Pray for the United States of America. Pray for our government. Pray for our president. Yes. You remember little Dean Whitten that used to sit down? Absolutely. In the nursing home. Yes. We need to remember her. Prayers for Dean. Dean God Whitten. bless her. Dana. My uh, niece, Deborah Henderson, she, I yeah. went to ask for prayer before, and she, uh, they have her on chemo again. Yeah, for Phyllis too. And for myself too. You, yourself too. Yeah, I'm getting better, but still I'm going through tests. How can you get better than you are right now? Is there possibly uh, grounds for, uh, is there, is there actually space for improvement? Uh, yes, there's lots okay. of Okay, <laughs> okay, well, you know. And lots of pounds as jars <laughs> And lots of what? <laughs> Extra pounds. What is she, is she saw, is that, what is she saw, like gives you a gentle rebuke or something? What is she doing with you, you know? She's just trying to help me get better. Well, me yeah. and Pastor Carrie both. Well, I'm glad she's focused on you. That keeps her from focusing on me, you know? So, oh, okay, thank you, Rosa. Yeah, well, you know, good. She yeah. loves us, okay? I know she does, she does. She does, okay, is that it? Okay, Lord, uh, I'm not gonna repeat them all, I mean, I'm sorry. We're looking for my friend Dorothy O'Brien. Dorothy O'Brien. And what's going on with Dorothy? She's in the hospital. They're not sure what's wrong with her. So. 
Daniel's overseas group here. Yes, Daniel. And many friends have requested prayers uh, during the week and today. Um, the Philippines, Mary and Sherry May, uh, Sheena, uh, many other friends with financial issues and health issues, and they need funds for health care and tuition and school. Um, Honey in the Philippines asked for prayers as well. Honey? She just... Uh, she graduated. She's a certified health care provider, and she's looking for work in other countries, and right. she asked for prayers. Carmen in Mexico, Sacramento right. and Valley, uh, friends in Europe, Africa, all over uh, Asia and in this country, people asking for prayers. Right. How's the grocery store book doing? They're doing great. Cherry May store. Oh, boy, I'll tell she's you. She's working hard. Sherry May soon to be opening up in the United States, I suppose. Absolutely. Sherry May Supermarket. That's wonderful. God bless them all. And Sakantola, God bless you and Mary and everybody there, Carmen, everybody there. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful for your finished work on the cross, grateful for redeeming us, for our salvation, yes. for allowing us to have a relationship with you. We pray, all of us pray that whatever faith we have, it increases, that we continue to increase our faith in you. And you know, you never let us down. You're always there with us. Many, many prayers, most of which you've heard all the names, and you know the prayers that are in our heart have to do with individuals that are going through tremendous health problems and very difficult. Some people with, need a lung transplant. They've gone through strokes, all sorts of problems. And we, uh, we pray that all these people are taken care of. And most importantly, even more important than that, I suppose, we pray that they all have a relationship with you. And for those who don't have a relationship, we pray, that, we pray for their salvation. Because we know if they have peace with you and in you, and they are in you, they will have peace in their hearts and, and peace about their situation. And that certainly will help their also their physical and their mental situation. We pray for our church that we're in right now, Christ Fellowship and the churches in the area, like all kinds of prayers and all the Bible-believing, Christ-centered churches and throughout the world. We pray for the gospel message that is continue to be sent out throughout the world. And we, we are so thankful for uh, Christ Fellowship that allows us to be here today. <laughs> Being in this country, may we always be allowed to worship the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we wish to gather. Pray for John, for a job, and David, who's getting out of, of uh, prison. We ask you for all these prayers in your blessed son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now we're on, I think, 244. 244. And that is... Let me see. Let me look at this. Oh, Spirit of the living God. I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
least two times. Get the full effect. Uh, do we, uh, are we, we're hugging each other now? Loving on each other? That's it? Yes. Okay, you guys got a few minutes. Go ahead and greet your neighbor. Okay. Jerry, Jerry, is your wife sick tonight? Jerry, how's Nan? Uh, yes, man. Oh, we should have prayed for her. We should have prayed for her. That's what happens, huh? You tell her we'll remember her about her. Well, yeah, sure. Hey, I got all the hymnals over here. So when you leave, we're gonna have a hymnal shortage. Yeah, Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, Acts 9, 3. Heaven came down on 438. And uh, by the way, before we go into that, praying for Nan, who is not well. She wanted to be here, so she, she insisted that Jerry come out anyway, which is a good thing. You need to be here. And, uh, and Dwayne Tuesday is going to the Philippines, right? No, Louisiana. Louisiana, and then the Philippines. So this is a warning to Louisiana and the Philippines. This is like a warning. This is a, That's a uh, good, Dwayne, mission, good mission field, Louisiana. You, you know how they have a hurricane watch? This is a Dwayne watch. He's on the way. Okay. Okay. We're ready now for Heaven Came Down. Born on the 
Spirit with light from above into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came. Took on the offer of grace he did proffer, he saved me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions of mine. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Riches eternal and blessings supernal from His precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. December 25th, 1980. Amen. Amen. Big day for me. <laughs> Big day for me. Heaven came down and glory Amen. filled my soul on that day. Okay. Enough of this personal stuff. We're going to have our... Right. Hey, buddy. Is that okay? No, don't worry about that. Just give praise to Jesus. Never apologize. I couldn't help myself. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So, uh, in any event, we're going to... Uh, pray for our, we're going to do our tithes and offerings now. So, Dwayne, Dwayne is approaching. No. Lord Jesus, again, we, we can't, we have undeserved grace. Nothing I did, not, no work I did, nothing I could have possibly done yes, Lord. deserves the blessings you bestowed upon me. We are all we are so grateful, and out of gratitude, out of gratitude, we're so uh, grateful that we can actually uh, give to the ministry and give to your church, so that the gospel message can be carried around the world to other people, so that more people can share in your pre precious judge blood atonement to be redeemed and we ask that these uh, tithes and these offerings be used uh, expeditiously and properly so the merit the pure message the pure message of the gospel is carried to millions and millions and millions of people we ask this in your blessed son's name Jesus Christ amen
Our last hymn before our message, great hymn. We've had some great hymns tonight, I'll tell you. This is cast all your anxiety on him. Cast all your anxiety on him. Be anxious for nothing because he cares for you. Yes. First Peter 5, 7, Amen. page 64. God will take care of you. people said. Amen. 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 I want to give you an opportunity to at least let all those folks out there on the internet know that I'm not up here by myself. We're not in a little room somewhere just uh, privately trying to make a broadcast. We're in a service tonight. 
And you know, I've been in a lot, a lot of churches, and uh, I've learned a lot, but I'm still learning. I think today's message by our pastor, our new pastor, our lead pastor from all of our many campuses, he is responsible. We adopted a $14 million budget today for all campuses. Now that's a, a little bit more than uh, our budget was in the first church that I served many years ago in Fairgrove, Missouri with 38 people in attendance, if you can imagine. If I had told them there was a church down in Miami that had a budget of $14 million a year, they would have said, now, we can't call that guy, he exaggerates. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, it's no exaggeration. I was here and I raised my hand to approve that budget, $14 million. Do you know why our church is concerned about the people of the world? not just Miami or Dade County or Florida, not just the United States, but people around the world as we tonight broadcast this little service. We have already heard from our lead pastor a Thanksgiving message that I thought was a, really a blessing to my own heart. And uh, I hope tonight will be a blessing from Ephesians chapter 1 in the New Living Translation. As we speak tonight on every spiritual blessing. Do you know what your spiritual blessings are if you're a child of God? When we were singing a moment ago, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Well, now listen, friends. There's a unique set of blessings that come only to true believers, born of God, part of the family. And we pray tonight that you will be blessed as you seek to share with us. Now, friends, I understand that we have a problem in translations, trying to get on the same page with people who are not as blessed as some of us in America who can put a Bible app in our iPad or our iPhone or whatever, our computer, and pull up so many different translations of the Word of God. But we're blessed. I'm blessed with an iPad that I purchased after I visited the church that I once served in Denver, Colorado. It was about three years ago, I recall. And they gave me a little love offering, you know, and I said, I don't want any offering. I'm back here as your guest. I serve this church, and they always blessed me in a special way that I could never repay. But they handed me a little check, and I said, well, I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to buy me an iPad. And the next day, my son took me <clears throat> to an Apple store in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And I bought the pad that I'm using tonight. And I thank God that I have all this at my uh, disposal. <laughs> when I don't want to read one, I can just flip it over and get one that I agree with. Because all translations are not the same. And friend, I want you to know that a lot of uh, heresy can be found in some translations. And a lot of misleading translations that give people a lot of ideas. Not what Paul would call sound doctrine. But we're admonished in the New Testament. And I want all those who are listening to this message to know that there is a set of blessings that can only be enjoyed 
of the family of God. The church, capital C, not the local church. Oh, they're, they're in there, some of them. Some of them. As you've heard me repeat often in this place, a lot of people who call him Lord are in that group that Jesus spoke about when he said, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He's talking about that group that said, Lord, you don't mean us. Well, we've prophesied in your name. That means to preach well in the New Testament. The ability to preach, that's a supernatural, spiritual gift in the New Testament. To speak forth truth in the power of the Spirit. Amen. 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 All right? Now, only born-again preachers can preach that way. Amen. Only people who know the Lord, as I've said, and I repeat this often, in the free pardon and forgiveness of sin and the fullness of the Holy Spirit can enjoy and experience and explain Now that narrows it down considerably of all that's going on in the name of the church and the Lord and denominations and so-called preaching that's being broadcast as we are tonight over the internet around the world. So don't be upset if I disagree with some that maybe you've heard or you've read and you say well that's not what my preacher believes that's not what I've been taught well you know Paul admonished the church at Corinth to test the spirits try the spirits plural a lot of hey a lot of spirits around but there's only one Holy Spirit God himself, his ability to be everywhere all the time, day or night, 24 hours in a day. His spirit is alive and well and producing the results that God himself has, pretend, has, has planned and foreordained from the foundation of the world. Amen. The spirit that was present when God said, plural, let us make man in our own image. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now it's from that source that spiritual blessings come. Now, I don't know what you're thankful for, as we approach this Thanksgiving day on this coming Thursday, I don't know what you thought about when we were singing a moment ago, count your blessings. But I know what I thought about. I thought about this scripture that I want you to read with me right now. When Paul, in chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians, as he wrote the church at Ephesus, said all praise to God the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Oh boy. Boy, that narrows it down, doesn't it? You can't find these in the cocktail lounge tonight. <laughs> Only in the heavenly realm. Listen to this. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Now Paul goes at great lengths to describe his audience here. His recipients. 
the people that he's writing to, that he wants to explain some things and expound some things to these folks. Okay? Now we're going to explain and expound tonight. Right now, the spiritual blessing, listen, in the heavenly realm. Verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved us. Oh my goodness. Well, that means before there was ever a man on this planet. Before the worlds were formed and framed. Even before the world was made. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Like Adam and Eve were. Before they fell into sin. Before they dishonored and disobeyed God. Before they destroyed that perfect relationship that they were sharing as they walked with God, the Bible says, in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. Do you know that's why God created us? To have fellowship with us. It must be, as one writer says, that God was lonely. That the Godhead was lonely. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit was lonely. He wanted to have fellowship with us. Now listen prayerfully. Let me read that fourth verse again because I, I think that some of us kind of, I know how our minds wander. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Now, if you have any question about why God saved us in the first place, why He sent His Son, why He provided salvation, that means to be saved, to pass from death unto life, from darkness into light, from sin into salvation and sanctification. See, the Bible uses all these words. And I just, I just can't repeat it often enough. The Bible has many ways of saying the same thing. That's why you never exhaust the truth in the Word of God. Now he says, before the foundation of the world, in verse 4, God loved us, chose us in Christ to be holy, without fault in His eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. Somebody said, you think God has other planets with other families? I don't know, but I'm fixing to find out one of these days. Amen. 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 You know, i tell you what. I have a lot of things to ask God about. Amen. Amen. I say, Lord, I enjoyed reading your book <laughs> and all those letters that Paul wrote. All those gospel writers and some of those two that, that Peter wrote, you know, uh, first and second Peter. Yeah. I enjoyed all that. But I'm like John Jefferson said, Lord, just just lead me up to the great white throne. Let me gaze on the face of my Jesus for a thousand years. You know, I don't know what Jesus had in mind when he said in his prayer in John 17, Glorify thou me with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. Mm. Whew, boy. That must be what they saw on the Mount of Transfiguration. The glory that blinded them. You know, you know, Paul never really got over that. Because he had that experience of that glorified Jesus on the Damascus Road. When the light struck him blind, you remember? And he had to have his sight restored. Think about it. Boy, that must have been a pretty bright light. I love when John said, God is light. 
and in him there is no darkness at all. Man, if it's that bright, you don't have to worry about any more darkness. Whew! Boy, listen to this. <laughs> this is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure, verse 5. It gave God great pleasure, these translators say in this translation. So we praise God for the glorious grace that he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Now here's another clarifying doctrine. We belong to Jesus. You know that song? Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Now don't say eternity. There's nothing nutty about eternity. It's not eternity. It's eternity with an I. You know, we just put out a lot of false stuff all the time. Not eternity. It's eternity. It's eternal life. Amen. It's God's life. It's God, life with God, from God, for the glory of God. That's the life we have. We're God's children. We're in His family. We've been adopted. Hallelujah. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, friend, I, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like Russell said a while ago, I feel better already. <laughs> I don't need turkey to make me feel good on Thanksgiving Day. You know, turkey will put you to sleep, L-tryptophan, it will. He'll put you in a dream state. You just go to bed and sleep like a baby if you eat enough of it. Nothing about God's Word that puts me to sleep. It wakes me up and causes me to lift my heart and my hand in praise to Him. Now listen to this. So we praise God for the glorious grace. This is verse 6. We praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. Verse 7. You want to mark, every, all the sevens in the Bible are important. Even the seventh verse of this chapter. Look at this. <laughs> that's the word, that's the number of completion. Seven days in a week, seven churches, seven spirits in the book of Revelation. See, seven is divine perfection. God worked six days and he rested on the seventh day, right? All right. Now I'm trying to help you to remember verse 7. Ephesians 4, 7. Listen to this. He is rich in kindness and grace that he has purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. There's three blessings right there. You see, they're just numberless blessings. There's a whole hymn that talks about numberless blessings. Listen to this. He has showered His goodness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, friend, now, now I want you to catch that word. I'm glad the translators brought this out and made it clear. He wants to shower us with understanding and wisdom. He wants us to know what He knows. See, wisdom is knowledge from God, not from a library. I passed that new, well, it's not new anymore, but it's fairly new, down in Palm Better Bay, the library there on the Old Cutler. That beautiful little library. Boy, they... They keep that ground manicured around there and keep those bushes trimmed. I told Doris, I said, you know, we need to go in there someday and just see that place. We've passed it often enough. 
But that's not that's not what we that's not the knowledge and the wisdom that God gives us. See, this is the heavenly realm we're talking about now. Remember that. God has no has now revealed, excuse me, to us his mysterious will regarding Christ. Oh, what how let me put this in seminary terms. What is your doctrine of Christology? Christology. The Christ, his messianic title. He's the Messiah. Christology. Listen to this. God has now revealed us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And his plan is this, that at the right time he will bring everything together under authority of Christ. You believe that? Yes. yes. All under his authority. Here it is. We have received an inheritance from God, another blessing, for he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. He's working it out. You know, when people say, that, don't worry, God's still in control, that's what they're talking about. He has a plan for every man. And while he's working it out, we don't understand it. I love that scripture that says, wait I say on the Lord. Be of good cheer. In the, in the meantime, you know, just be happy about the fact that God's working it out. I got some news last night that I still don't fully understand over the phone and I still don't know what it's all about but it upset me to the point that I really got upset for a couple hours. Now Russell says I get upset like he does because I'm upsetable. Well, I, you know, I have... <laughs> I haven't fully realized all that I have in Christ and all that He is in me and all that He's doing in me and for me. I'm still trying to comprehend that. But I know that's His plan. Now look. God's purpose that we Jews, He said. Now He's including Himself. He's talking about a special group of people. God's own people. Special plan, special purpose. Verse 12, God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. Russell, did you know that when you, when you were born? God had a plan. I've heard you talk, when you give your testimony about a Jewish boy from Brooklyn, right? From the Bronx, from Greenland. From the Bronx, yeah. Now, if you've never been to New York, you don't know what the Bronx is. But if you have, you know. If you've taken one of those boat rides around Manhattan, boy, I love that four-hour boat ride. I took everybody I took up there. Every time I've taken any member of my family or when I recommend to my friends, it's whatever you do. Now you can go to the top of the Empire State Building and all that other good stuff. And you can go see the Statue of Liberty. But don't you fail to take that boat ride, that sightseeing boat trip around Manhattan. And they point out all those buildings. Man, how many of you have done that? One, two, three of us, that's all. Oh my goodness, let's all get on an airplane and go up there and do it. You know when the last time Doris and I did that was right after 9-11? Two weeks after 9-11, we went up there. They were still cleaning up that big hole in the ground from all that 
probably dangerous stuff that we were breathing and didn't know it. Because we were right down there by it, looking to the fence where they had it all blocked off. We were peeking through the cracks. And I want to tell you something, friend. I remembered when I was a young teenager and my dad came back from World War II and we went over there. My mother and my brother and I, when we were living at Camp Kilmer, I mean at uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, we got on a, a train and went over there and, and walked through New York, walked down the streets, Fifth Avenue, and got on a bus and rode around. And I remembered when I got on there how different things looked. And I remember those two tall buildings that were no longer there. How things change, my friend. But you know what? I read a verse that says, I am the Lord thy God who changeth not. Do you know when I see, when I see the Lord Jesus, he's going to look just exactly like he did the day he came out of that too. Amen. And I'm going to see him face to face and tell the story saved by grace. I'm going to give my testimony because the Bible says that the angels are going to hear from us. They don't know anything about being saved. But we can tell them what it means to be saved. We can tell them about God's plan and how we were a part of that. Just think of that. If you get down this Thanksgiving Day, go back and read this chapter. Listen to this. that Christ would bring praise and glory to God through the Jews. Now look, verse 13. And now you Gentiles, see he's writing to both crowds. You Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saved you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. Did you know we, we're branded? Did you know that? He gave us the Holy Spirit, the seal of the Spirit. We wear the seal. We enjoy the down payment. You know, the King James it says, the earnest of our inheritance. God put down earnest money on us. He did. All right, now look. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give you and give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify Him. Now in closing tonight, I want to say this. Is that what we came to do? Are we looking on going to Grandma or Grandpa's or going to our cousins or our friends or neighbors who invited us or maybe going out to some fancy restaurant so we can celebrate Easter? I think I'll just stay home and eat the turkey breast that my wife bought. She didn't like to work with that whole turkey. Just two of us. And we'll be eating every way she can fix turkey for a week. We'll have turkey sandwiches and, you know, whatever. And I'll sleep real good all week. <laughs> all that L-tryptophan. Amen? Amen? I'll tell you, I'm going to sleep good tonight knowing if Jesus comes before morning, I'm going to see all this take place. 
I'm going to see the beginning of the end. <laughs> I'm going to see the beginning of the drama of the ages of eternity. Who will praise him and sing around his throne the old song, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and dominion and power. Only he is worthy, my friend. It was his grace that saved us. It's his grace that sanctifies us every day. It's his grace that sees us through every trial and every problem. It's in his grace that we stand tonight, redeemed and reborn and reconciled, regenerated by his power. Oh, dear friend, tonight, if you're listening to us and you have never had this experience of new life in Christ, to step from the darkness into the light, to step into the glorious liberty of God's children, Oh, dear friend, let me, let, me, let me let you in on a secret. This is the message that we're trying to share with the whole world. The message to a lost and dying world that there's a Savior. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And if you're listening tonight, I want you to know that you can have forgiveness through the blood that he shed on that cross that was poured out for you. As the old hymn says, He included you. He included me. When Jesus said, Whosoever will. Because that's Jesus speaking when He said, Whosoever will may come and take of the water of life freely. Oh, friend, have you had a drink at the river of the water of life? Do you have that life in you tonight? Believe me, believe me, there's no joy like the joy that we find in Jesus. The invitation hymn that we sang in the morning service. And I want to invite you to pull up the, if you have the, the, the uh, way of pulling up Christ's fellowship and the morning message that our lead pastor brought today. Please listen. We sing an invitation hymn. Oh, my goodness. And I thought of my message tonight and what God had laid on my heart. And I was wondering how many people who listen to our pastor, who reaches out to so many people in our county and on uh, the Internet to, to other uh, uh, Christ Fellowship churches in other countries, I wondered how many would receive Jesus into their heart. I wonder if they really realize that what the pastor was saying, that we have a message to, show, to share with the nations. And we're trying to do that tonight, at least our part of it, as the Lord gives us this opportunity to share with you. So please tonight, open the door of your heart. Say yes to the one who knocks, who wants to come in and cleanse you by his own blood and carry your sins as far, the Bible says, away from you as the east is from the west. He'll do that for you, even now, as we pray. Lord, I pray that tonight, around this world, in the days to come, as people listen to your word again, that they'll understand that in the heavenly realm there are blessings abundant, blessings indescribable, that can only be experienced through the power of a living God. And Father, we pray that as we tell this story to the nations once more, as we share this good news, that many more will receive Jesus into their heart. And we ask it all in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. 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 
Now we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And I want you to prayerfully, carefully listen to these words and let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart.
They have a new thing, you know, at the movies. What? If you pay them nineteen dollars a month, you can see any movie anytime, as many times as you want to see. Wow. Did you know that? I'm gonna I'll sign up for well, that. Well, my goodness, you can I'll take your grandchildren, that. your wife, and everything. Wow. Passed away. We love you. Praise God. Amen. 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 Amen.